Hi, Matt McCord here, and I want to... I had a great day today. I've been uh, going to my old grade school, Robert Gray Grade School in Southwest Portland, and playing basketball on their outdoor court and for the whole week, actually, and I've been getting much better. It took a while to get my aim recalibrated, but the boiler room door was open, and I used to be the assistant that I that was called junior janitor, the janitor's helper. He got me out of class, and I'd go set up the chairs for an assembly in the cafeteria. They called it the cafetorium because it was a cafeteria auditorium. That's where I played one of my first a bunch of my first shows great stage and uh, so I walked in nobody in the janitor area in the border room but the other door to the gym was open so I decided to walk in there and the contractor they're rebuilding the school because of a flood during the uh, winter storm and I still have my basketball and boy, it just took me right back to in time. It was like a time machine. And the guy there, the contractor, was really nice. And I explained I'd gone to school here from 1965 to 1974. In fact, I graduated in a coat similar to this, except it didn't have the bones on it. It was a white coat because I saw Pete Townsend wearing one. And I thought, oh, that'll be cool. So I had a white pants, white jacket. And uh, that's why I graduated in, from eighth grade and uh, went to Jesuit high school. I didn't, I really had uh, some problems with a lot of people that went to Wilson and uh, I was the only divorced kid and I wasn't Jewish and a lot of stuff. So when the Jesuit people came to, uh, how do you say, what do you say, draft me or uh, recruit me, to come to Jesuit to play football and promised me a four-year scholarship if I kept playing football for him because I was on the Pop Warner All-Star team with Frank Bonanto and uh, Tony Graham and a whole bunch of people that I was still staying in touch with. And, uh, well, oh man, I remember, okay, I'm back here in the gym and talking and shooting baskets too. And I could, I could, in my brain, I could see Mr. Bird, the PE teacher, standing over by his office. And um, Mrs. Rolf, she was always there. And Barbara Weed, who was like this Goldie Hawn type lady. And uh, I remember the time. <laughs> it was just straight out of a Wonder Years episode. Uh, there was a guy named Randy Cook. He was bust in from the valley down there by Corbett, which was kind of like a hardcore, a lot of bikers, a lot of, you know, gypsy jokers and outlaw bikers were, lived down there at the time before it got refurbished and gentrified. And this guy, Randy Cook, would always give me crap because I was talking to his friend, Chuck Painter. And... Uh, he kept threatening to beat me up, and uh, well, we're it's basketball season, and we're all in the basketball in the dressing room, locker room after basketball practice one night, and I'm in uh, seventh grade, yeah, seventh grade, no sixth grade, that's right, because it was okay, sixth grade, I'm in the locker room, and. They're all in there. We're all the same age. The older kids came in later. Randy Cook came in to practice later, and the kids go, Matt, Randy's here. He's going to beat you up. And so everybody left. Just like a Wonder Years or Leave It to Beaver episode, they leave, and they're waiting in the hallway for me. And I wanted, I just am not a big fighter. If I have to... I'm trained to kill, but I don't like to fight for sport. And I couldn't really afford the uh, jail time. So I'm rushing to get my 
basket back into the rack and lock it up, and I bumped into a wall. I, I walked right into it with my eye. <laughs> so I put it in, I lock it up, I get out of the dressing room, and the kids in the hallway said, look, look at your eye, it's all red, he hit you. And I said, no, I walked into a wall. <laughs> You know, it's just like the the standard, uh, you know, I fell down some stairs. <laughs> but they all said, no, he hit you. There's a fight. He beats you up. And uh, I went home, and the next day I woke up, and I had the biggest purple shiner, the only black eye I've ever had in my life. My grandfather, Bill Emerson, a drummer, a drummer that started me playing when I was five years old, had given me, he owned an optician place downtown on 10th and Morrison called uh, Prescription Optical. He had given me a pair of sunglasses with its brand new technology that they went dark when it was in the sunlight. And I thought, oh, I didn't wear them to school. Everybody saw my black eye. Randy got the credit. And uh, the principal saw me and, and knew about the uh, the conflict between me and this older student. And so she thought he did it and thought I was lying and uh, suspended him from school for like three days. <laughs> I mean, it just, it's totally out of a script from a sitcom, and it's nuts. So I think that night we were, I think it was like a Wednesday night, we're going to, me and my friend Bill Hoffman. Hi, Bill, how you doing? Nice to see you. Yeah, and anybody I tagged on this video, like um, Debbie, Debbie Dawkins, yeah, not really your name, but Penny Bustman, and Denise Rowland, and uh, I, I, in fact, Denise and Debbie, they're sisters, and they lived on the corner of Robert Gray's. There's a school, then a street, Canaan. They lived right there, and that's I park facing their house, so I, I think about her all the time. She's a nurse, and... Uh, I remember her sister, Denise, she was in the smoking group, and I was walking home on, by the footbridge. There's a footbridge over this ravine. I'll get back to the other story. And I remember seeing her down there smoking old golds and complaining that I hate to have to smoke on hot days. So, well, don't smoke then. I just never did. It never appealed to me. Somebody told me, Matt, you should smoke. It'll make you cool. I thought... And I told the guy, I go, fuck you. I was born cool. I don't need to suck on something. What? Yeah. Anyway. So, <laughs> Denise and Debbie, they, I still talk to them on Facebook. And if I talk to you on Facebook, hello. I talk to Kirk Green quite often. Robert Gray was like the first school that had inner city, cross town, Integration busing is what it was when civil rights came through, like 1969. And they bus kids from the north side of Portland, which was called the black part of Portland. It was very segregated at the time. And it, man, North Portland, it had a different vibe, a different pulse. People were nice. The families were always super friendly. They would feed you and just take you in like they're you're one of them, man. Up here in the West Hills, people wouldn't even talk to you in the store. But you go to North Portland, go in the store, people just start talking to you. The only experience I had like that was when I went to Amsterdam in 2002, and everybody was like that. And I thought, wow, it restored my faith in humanity. North Portland gave me the faith in humanity because it just didn't happen in this area. I was not a Jewish kid, and uh, my stepfather was. His father had put up a lot of money. He was a Jewish mobster to build the uh, first Jewish community center and also the brand new Middleman Jewish Community Center. And so we got to go there. But they always questioned why I was there and that I shouldn't be there. You know, because 
a kid with blonde hair and blue eyes and ladies with tattoos on their wrists and man that uh, I liked Francine Newman me and her were like starting to really like each other about the same about the same time not in sixth grade and she said this is my grandma and she came up and grabbed her away and she got in my face and screamed at me don't you ever talk to my granddaughter ever again and whisked her away and uh then she told me later uh, my grandmother was at a camp and we didn't they didn't teach us about the holocaust it was just this year when the other third grade teacher from my grade school at robert gray mrs banco she finally got the holocaust into the portland public schools curriculum i mean i had no idea that auschwitz had been around or what you know the whole deal i thought i would see these posters for benign breath camps like summer camps for kids i thought that's what she's talking about and i had no idea because they just didn't talk about that and uh mrs banco finally got it into the portland public schools curriculum so you could learn what the hell people went through when i went to jesuit they had a man who had written a book about escaping Auschwitz, one of the few people that found, that got out that way, and he came and talked to the whole school, and we had to read the book, and we had to study, like, for six months, and I just couldn't believe the horrors. Man, I didn't believe people could be that way towards other human beings. It just really is shouldn't happen. So... Where was I? Oh, yeah. I got the black eye. Oh, yeah. Back to inner city busing. I'm friends with Kurt Green, and he, he's a great piano player, keyboard player, musician. He's been around for, he's a legendary Portland soul, funk, jazz pianist. The guy, uh, the uh, public safety guy I would talk to every day at PCC. Knew him real well, and he would always tell me about great jazz stuff, and he knew Kirk really good. I used to pass his old house, which was a church on 9th and Ainsworth, where the family lived, but the inside, it was like an old store, and the middle of it was a church. And I went over a few times to jam with Kirk there, and, uh, but uh, Randy Cook was part of the inner city they bust people from corbett street area and so there is the biker kids and the black kids that all came to robert gray grade school because of civil rights and uh, uh anyway back to the black eye so I got this shiner, this black eye, and uh, I've got to go to my first concert. I'm 11 years old. Bill Hoffman and I, Bill is a guy that I learned to play guitar with starting about age 10 or 11, about the same time. So we're going to go to this concert, and... At the Paramount Theater, my mom will drop us off. We go to the concert. We're the youngest kids there. We're waiting in line and see all these bigger hippies. And the, the concert was Can't Heat, and the opening band was Glencoe. And I don't never heard about them ever again, but I did hear. I did a gig in Eugene, and the guitar player for Can't Heat, that was his bar, Harpo's. He was a grumpy guy, Henry Vestein. So uh, anyway, we go to the concert. We sit down. Bill is on the aisle side. I'm the second seat. And the third seat is this hippie with an uh, army jacket and, you know, long, really long hair and a bottle, a bottle of Annie Green Screens. That's easy for you to say. A bottle of Annie Greensprings wine shoved down his pants. So he drinks, takes the ball out, takes a drink, and gives me it for a drink. And my grandma had bought me this wine before. 
And so I killed a bunch of, yeah, that's great. So I built it in the morning. Then he lights a joint and hands me the joint. And meanwhile, I'm wearing the glasses, the sunglasses that turn dark in sunlight inside the dark Paramount <laughs> at my first concert with Bill Hoppin. And he passes me this joint and I yell into his ear, no, thank you. I'm allergic. <laughs> and he didn't get it. I just said, no, thank you. I kept saying that, but he kept trying to pass it to me and Bill. Finally, he didn't. But uh, straight out of the Wonder Years or Leave It to Beaver. So I went to the concert with the black eye. <laughs> crazy but being back at Robert Gray brought back so many great memories my girlfriend in 8th grade was Kathy Myers and my first love I really liked her and I messed up big time but uh, her, her mom would go to her house she lived in she lived by Corbett and I went down to her house the Corbett Street and I'd ride my bike all the way down to Corbett Hills. <laughs> and her mom would always come in and ask us if we want something to eat, no matter what. We never got to be alone at her house. My house was a different story. And, uh, yeah, that was cool. But it was cool being back there and remembering being the assistant, the junior janitor. And Ben Pasqua, the janitor, would always say, come on, he was this Hawaiian guy. Come on, man, come with me. And what are we going to do? Come on, we'll go get a, go get a pop. And we, the teacher's lunchroom had a pop machine. So he gave me an RC, an RC, RC Cola. And then we go uh, through the secret door that went over the locker rooms. And the, the lights were, there's like a screen inside on the ceiling. And the lights pulled out so you could change the light bulb. So he said, come on, let's go over here. He pulls one out quietly. And it was over the girls' locker room. And it was eighth grade girls gym time. Yeah. <laughs> kind of funny. But we did stuff like that. And he had wine down there too. And it was a, it was a good gig. I got out of a lot of class. And uh, I remember that my seventh grade teacher, Mrs. Ide, I can still hear her heels clonking down the street. Hi, hallway. You can always hear it so loud. Mr. Fuller, Dexter Fuller, was a really cool teacher, and he would uh, let us, me and Bill Hop, and I think Brooks High was a drummer. Malcolm Smith was a bass player, and I was the only one that was totally into this stuff. And I would, I mean, hardcore. I'm going to be a rock star. I, somebody said, "What do you want to do in your life?" I said, "I'm going to be a rock star, rock star, or an NFL football player." And Dexter Floor would let us practice in the cafeteria in the afternoons. And one time, me and Dexter Fuller planted some pot seeds in plants in the office. And the ladies kept watering them. And I go in there and go, oh, look at those plants. I go, aren't they, aren't they pretty? And didn't have an idea what they were. He was a cool teacher. He had a girlfriend, this nurse with blonde hair who was super friendly. And uh, I really liked her. <clears throat> Later on, Mr. Fuller started the uh, restaurant, Walter Mindy's, which is right across the street from Portland Community College, Sylvania. And I always thought of him when we went there. I think uh, he died. And uh, he was a very cool guy. Him and Jan Kapliner, who was a, like a ski club guy. And 
Those two guys were like the party dudes. I helped him build a bed in his Volkswagen bus at the school. But uh, I saw the stuff, the memories kept flooding in since I've been there this week. And I remember my first day going to Mrs. Setzel's class in kindergarten. I didn't know anybody in the area. No kids on my street. And I was like the only kid on my street forever. There was one girl up the street. She didn't talk much. She had an old brother. But, uh, yeah, had some good times there. And then I went to Jesuit High School. And that's a whole nother program. <laughs> so we'll continue this a little later. I'm Matt McCourt with my childhood memories of Robert Gray and hello all my friends who went to school there and uh, playing basketball is a good exercise. I'm not, you know, don't play games. I, I, what I do is I dribble down to the one end of the court, shoot it until I make it, dribble down to the other side, shoot it until I make it, and I'll tell you, the first couple of days my aim was so off. But I felt like Robocop after he got shot up as a robot. But um, it's better now. It's been fun, and I'm going to keep doing it. Have a good weekend. I'm Matt McCorp.